at Subway. Start your day the flavorful way by adding new guacamole to your favorite breakfast sandwich. Perfectly made with a hint of jalapeno, our guacamole turns up the flavor to your breakfast. Try it today on a hot and toasty egg white and cheese. Subway, eat fresh. The BS Report is a free-flowing conversation that occasionally touches on mature subjects. The BS Report. The BS Report with Bill Simmons. Welcome to the BS Report, taping this on a Friday afternoon. Uh, six days before the draft, Jalen Rose is here. We spent a lot of time together in Miami and Indiana and San Antonio. You mind if I bring my battle along for bring the BS Report? Bring your battle along. Okay. Bring your, this is unfiltered. <laughs> Don't get fired, we have as much bro. time as we want. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> the draft is coming. Uh huh. Yeah, we're, we're working, working the draft. draft. Yes. Thursday. We are. Yep. With Reese Davis and Jay Billis. Yes, indeed. And it's going to be probably the most interesting draft that's ever happened because Joel L. Embiid got hurt. He hurt his foot. He did. He broke his navicular bone. Good job, <laughs> Thank Bill. You. Uh, Bill Walton broke that bone. Yao Ming broke that bone. Zydrunas Elgoskis broke that bone. Michael Jordan broke that bone. Was totally fine after. So I don't know what to make of that. But it's a serious injury. He is not going to go first. If you were the Cleveland Cavaliers, who would you take first? Okay, so it's not who they're going to take. No. Who I think they should no, that, take. This is our mock draft. Who, What we think they should do. Okay, you got not it. Not what they're going to do. Okay. Number one, if I'm the Cleveland Cavaliers... If I'm going to get a franchise player, I have to draft him because I'm not just throwing blank checks around the league for prominent players. And it's tough for me to recruit players, even if I have LeBron James. So you're saying you can't get a free agent if you're Cleveland, who is one of the top 20 players in the league. It's an impossibility. Yes. Okay. So I have to draft him. Okay. And you know who I'm drafting? The guy you just described, Joel Embiid. You're taking him anyway. I'm not panicking. You know, panicking is a broken navicular bone. I know, but you know what? I reached last year with Anthony Bennett. You can even hear Bill Simmons in the background like, whoa! <laughs> yeah. Okay. I made that choice okay. as an owner, but I also made the Kyrie Irving choice, and he turned out pretty well. And I need to pair him with a guy that can protect the rim, that can score on the block, that can create balance on our team. I'm taking MB. I'm going to deal with his injury issues. I'm going to wait for him to get healthy and hope he turns into a guy that could be a game changer for 12 to 15 years. Injury issues? Is that what we're calling them now? Yeah. When you have a back and you have a foot and you can't play in the NCAA tournament. It seems like you need both of those things. <laughs> Especially when you're seven foot. But he's a skilled big guy. I have to take the Very chance. skilled. Seven foot one Serge Ibaka. Yep. I watched him work out. I was really impressed. I thought he was a guaranteed number one pick. And then it turned out he had some foot injury. Nobody knows if he hurt the foot during a workout, if it was an injury he had at Kansas, what the deal is. But nobody knows about the back either. I've heard conflicting things about the back might be a little more serious, maybe. But he possibly. showed but he showed the Cavs before he had this foot injury that he was moving terrific. He was shooting the he basketball. Was. He was shooting threes. He and was now, turning over both shoulders. And now he's in a cast. Correct. So, again, if I'm the Cavs, I'm trying to hit the home run. They've tried for singles. Bunt singles. They've tried for doubles. They've had a home run with LeBron James. I'm trying to do that with Joel Embiid. Okay, so I agree with you and I disagree with you. I think they should trade down. I think they should take the one pick and move down to three. The Sixers are panicked that they're not going to get Wiggins. Sixers want Wiggins. They they haven't really exactly made it a secret or kept it a secret. Milwaukee can't take Wiggins. I don't think he'd be happy there. I don't know if that's the right pick. They need a nice, stable guy, a sure thing, a commodity. They need to take Jabari Parker. So if Philly and Cleveland swap picks, Cleveland moves down to three. They take Embiid there. Philly leapfrogs Milwaukee. Now they don't have to worry about losing Wiggins. Everybody wins. But Cleveland doesn't because if you're the Cavs, you're saying in a draft where their projected picks – not only the top three guys that we've discussed, but multiple players that I think become all-stars in this draft. Mm -hmm. Why would you allow somebody else to make the decision for you? You have well, the number one the pick. Decision. No, you have the number one pick. Pick the best player. They're going to do that don't, anyway. Don't, they're just going to get him in three. No, don't try to do the process of elimination. Why? Oh, if you take Jabari and then you take Wiggins, oh, I have no choice but to get in beat. No, you got the first pick. Take who you feel like you want. 
I go the other way. I would pretend I was taking Wiggins. <laughs> I would make Philly panic. <laughs> like, oh, Wiggins looking really good. <laughs> Looks awesome. Because think about it, if you're Philly at three, you thought you were getting Wiggins. You thought it was going to go Embiid, Parker, Wiggins. Now all of a sudden this monkey wrench happens. Now Cleveland takes Parker. Milwaukee's like, all right, fine, we'll take Wiggins. Now you're Philly. You've Embiid with a broken foot. You already have New Orleans Noel. I don't think those two can play together, although whether New Orleans Noel is a starter remains to be seen. But um, I think Philly would get a little desperate at that point. They have the 10th pick. Maybe you figure out a way to trade the one and Dion Waiters for three and 10. Then you take Embiid three. I think the way you just described the first three picks is how I think they should go. Right. I think Embiid should go to the Cavs. I think Parker, who has Chicago roots, it's an hour away from Milwaukee. If he becomes a 20-point scorer. Is it an hour? Yes, it's an hour. I've done it. I know you've done it. I've, you've, there might have been an, <laughs> an import at 40. <laughs> exactly. Chicago, I, what's Chicago airport to Milwaukee um, in a limo? How much did that limo cost? Was it a limo like or one, a town car? Like 115 Cab? Do you ever cab? if it's the winter time. You know, it gets cold in the Midwest. What's the level of transportation for the imports from Chicago to Milwaukee? You got a 100%. Town car or drive. Town car. Yeah, or drive. What do you mean drive? You make them drive? Yes. From Chicago to Milwaukee? I mean, don't you have, you want to deal with people that normally have one crucial element if you're going to visit with them, a car. Oh, good, good point. Good point. <laughs> well, what if they're not from Chicago? Well, well then, you know, you're not working your, your districts right. If you're going to import, it got to be in the region. You got to import from the Midwest right. when you're there. In the South when you're there. On the West Coast when you're there. You can't be in Milwaukee importing somebody from L.A. It right. just doesn't work like that. So Milwaukee is seventy, probably 75-minute drive from Chicago. Jabari Parker, a hero in Chicago, won four straight high school titles. He goes to Milwaukee. Good kid. Not the kind of kid who's going to be like, you got to pay me this or I'm going to leave. Nice family. Reliable. Probably, what do we think? Somewhere between... Slightly poor man's Paul Pierce, a little bit of Rudy Gay in there, ta- a touch of Carmelo. I say more Glenn Robinson. Oh, I like that one. Yeah, I like Because Glenn. he's going to be bigger than threes where he can post them up, mm. but he's not going to be able to guard them off the dribble. And we don't think he was in shape last year for reasons that I don't think were his fault because he broke his foot last, yep. the summer before. Correct. Seemed like he was carrying another 15. Um, I look at him and I think like – in five years, when Tim Grover or whoever gets a hold of him, that guy is going to be a nice chiseled piece of NBA meat, and he's going to look good. But one thing that's not going to change, and this is why you play team basketball, there were moments in his freshman year where Coach K would take him out defensively because yep. he was really hurting the team. Or play him at center to try to hide him. I thought it was interesting. <laughs> play him a zone and stick him in the back. Correct. Yeah. So I, I do think he's the most ready to play when October, November happens. That's why I think you take him number two. Um, the thing I like about him, he seems like he'd be fun to play with. I know that's a weird thing to say. No, it's not. When I watched him in person, just the way he saw the court, he's a good guy. I didn't feel like he was a ball hog. Kind of fit in, could do a bunch of things, could kind of roll with whatever was happening. thought he had a nice feel. I was impressed. And also the thing is he understands his strengths and weaknesses offensively. Like, when a player has the ability to score 20 points, which I think he's going to have the ability to do in the league, you got to do it in very few dribbles. There are not many possessions where I caught him dribbling six, seven times Mm. before he get a shot. He's more decisive like Carmelo used to be when he played at Syracuse, when he played in Denver, how it was two, three, four dribbles, and then worst case scenario, he finishing at the hoop. It was decisive. And that's what I like about his game. All right, so flip this around. Would you be shocked if he didn't score 20 points in a season at some point in his career? He's going to be a 20-point scorer to answer your question. Yes, I would be. I would be shocked as well. Would you be shocked if he didn't average 20 points a game for, like, let's say for four seasons in his prime combined? He should definitely have at least four seasons where he averages over 20, no doubt about it. We agree. So I think he's the surest thing in the draft. Like yep. you point to Wiggins and and I look at Wiggins, I'm like, I don't know. Like, yeah, he has the highest upside, but I could also see him just being like a really good defensive player who kind of floats in and out of games offensively. You know, I, I remember seeing T-Mac when he was in Toronto as a rookie 
and he looked like he was totally out of it. But you could at least see that there was athletic ability there. The one and this thing, kid's the same age T-Mac was in Toronto. How about in common, these top three prospects that we're describing all have at least one, if not two parents that performed at an elite level athletically. Mm. Like all of these kids have growing up at homes like Sonny Parker was an NBA player. OK, who is Embiid? In- Embiid. So let me give you some some stats on Embiid. His father um, is a colonel in the military. OK. OK. So imagine. And he's a handball champion. Handball champion. OK. Now, I like him. Now, how about this? I never met my father, but some of the decisions I made in my life, if he was a military colonel and he was good at handball. Yeah. I have some whips on my face. <laughs> OK. So he's going to be disciplined and play within himself. We talked about Parker and obviously Wiggins, his mom and his dad were athletes. So growing up in those house households, I think it taught him, taught him to sacrifice, to work ethic, to be able to see it up close. I think it meant a lot for those three prospects. So the Del Curry corollary. Yeah, basically. Yeah. I always thought Steph Curry, that was like an advantage for him. So I'm fascinated by this. So I'm going to tell oh, you. I like you're going off script. I like oh, yeah. this. You put out a white piece of paper Correct. and everything. So look, his, like I said, Embiid's father is a colonel in the military and a handball champion. You know what his name is? Colonel Embiid. No, his father's name oh. is Thomas. Colonel Thomas Embiid. Okay. <laughs> right? And for Jabari Parker, you know, his father, Sonny, was a 17th pick in the first round. I remember. Played six years State. in the NBA. Didn't he have red hair? I'm not sure. Yeah, he was redheaded. And for Wiggins, I mean, his dad, Mitchell, you know, played at um, Florida State. And Houston Rockets. Played in the 86 Finals. Absolutely. And also his mom. Had a little mom, trouble after that. His mom was a track standout. So she won two NCAA titles. I don't like how prepared you are. And two silver medals. Two silver medals? Yes. In the Olympics. Wow. So these are really accomplished parents who have kids that are athletes that they're they're teaching them at an elite level what it's going to take to be productive. You know what I've been meaning to tell you for like ever since I've known you? You should really be mad at David Robinson and John Thompson and Charles Smith and those guys who blew the 88 gold medal. Because if that didn't happen, there never would have been the groundswell to have the pros play. And you would have been on the 92 Olympic team. I know. Picture that. That would have been an awesome team. You know. Was, was it, when was C-Webb's draft? He got drafted in 93. Oh, maybe you wouldn't have been on that team. No, that was a year. Oh, no. Yeah, you were frat, You were freshman. Yeah, we were. Okay, so who's on the 92 team if there's no pros? Leitner? All of the dude guys because Coach, Bobby Hurley. Coach K is a terrific ambassador. If you look back at all of those clips, there were always Duke players. Allen Houston? He was at Tennessee putting up work. UC Webb and Juwan. I think you get three on the Glenn team. Glenn Robinson. Oh, Glenn Robinson's on that team? Jason Kidd. Is Jason Kidd on that team? He is. He's in my draft. Grant Hill. Yep. Penny Hardaway. He, oh, yeah, you're Memphis. right. He hadn't come out yet. Yep. Shaq had come out, though. No, Shaq hadn't come out because he was Shaq 92. Shaq, Alonzo. That team would have killed everybody. <laughs> we didn't need the pros. <laughs> it was about business. You know, Coach K would have cut one of the Michigan guys, <laughs> and it would have turned into a blood war. Yeah, you're cut. <laughs> you know what would have happened? You wouldn't have survived Monte Carlo. Like, where's Jalen? Where's Jalen? practice. Wait. He said he had to go back to the Monte Carlo hotel for a second. <laughs> or like in the Fab Five doc. I'm a product of my environment, and this ain't it. <laughs> Jalen on the flight back to Detroit. <laughs> he said he couldn't take it anymore. <laughs> you would have liked Monte Carlo. I need to. You actually might still be there. <laughs> Never would have come back. <laughs> I knew that this podcast with somebody else, me, me and Bruce Bowen or somebody. Um, all right, so we think Milwaukee should take Parker. Yeah, Milwaukee has to take Parker. He's a he's a twenty point scorer potentially for multiple seasons. And also, here's the thing you got to pay attention to when you're the Cavs and the Bucks. And mm-hmm. I want to stress this. You're not getting the elite level free agent just to come unless you double overpay him. Right. So you gotta draft your go your go to guy. You gotta draft your game changing player. Well let's you, well let's play this out though. If Cleveland takes Parker, we both think Milwaukee should take Wiggins, right? And either take him and trade him or figure it out, but he's the best asset there. Yes. So then Philly ends up with him beat anyway. Yep. So we think that's still the order in some way. Yeah, that's those are the three. Now, Philly, what if Philly says, see, here's what I think Philly's going to do. I think Philly is totally fine with throwing away next year, too. They threw away the last year. 
you take Embiid. Maybe with the 10th pick, you take Dario Saric, stash him for a year, and you're awful again. Okay. Now you get another top three pick. So now you have Noel, you have Embiid, you have Michael Carter-Williams, you have Saric, and you have whoever next year's top four pick is. And all of a sudden now you have four high lottery picks, basically. Embiid's not falling to three. You want to bet on it? Sure. I still owe you like five lobster to put it I owe you like four now because I paid off a couple. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you did. I did. Yeah. For all of the listeners, he did pay off a couple when it's, we were in Miami. I'm, I'm on a payment plan. <laughs> I paid two or three. Cleveland has to take Embiid one. I know there's injury concern. I get that. But if you got a chance to get a game-changing player that's seven foot, 250 pounds, turns over both shoulders, protects the rim, just got to draft him. Here's here's – Here's why it's good that we ha- are on this show together and we've had separate experiences and we have separate skills in life. Now, you're looking at this objectively like Cleveland, here's what they should do. He's the best pro ever. I'm going to bring in the psyche of the Cleveland fan. <laughs> this is a, a city that has not won a title since 1964, 50 years ago. They just got Manziel. This is a you city. know what? We need to hang out with Johnny Manziel. He, I'm ready. He ain't getting ready for the NFL season. He's getting ready for the summer. We need to follow him. When I have my It's Time to Get Divorced weekend, he's invited. <laughs> exactly. We're invited, Johnny Rizzo. They haven't won a title in 50 years. Everything goes wrong for them at all possible times. <laughs> now they're going to draft Joel Embiid first with his broken navicular bone in his foot and his possible stretch fracture in his back. Like, I don't think the city would be able to handle it. If anything, I think they have to go the other way. It's almost like all the baggage they have as a city would have to lead to them just taking the safe pick, which is Jabari Parker. You can't allow what's happened in the past to dictate how you make this pick. Unless you're Cleveland. <laughs> if you're anybody, you have to take the emotion out of it. I think Cle- – really how about this? And Bede broke his foot, it seems like, in the Cleveland workout. I think we add that to Cleveland's <laughs> list of things that have happened to Cleveland. <laughs> I always have a ready joke about how God hates Cleveland. Now God's injuring their, their draft prospects. Well, they had Jim Brown. They did, and they've been, and and that was it. God was like, "That's enough for you guys." Yeah, they had years. Jim Brown, and they had LeBron for seven years. They did eight years, for seven or eight, mm-hmm. I forget. Okay, so any chance Embiid falls past three? No, because if he does, I think Iron Tom will steer him away from Orlando and Utah. A lot of smoke screens, but no, like he's still a terrific prospect. He just injured. Okay. Um. All right. This is what we should, do, what they should do anyway. So this is what they should do. So so far we have. You say Embiid, I, I say Parker for one. We both agree Wiggins for two, and then Embiid Parker for three. Correct. We think that's top three. Correct. Number four, Orlando. What do you think? Dante Axel. Australian dude. Yes, he's 18 years old. He plays the point. They have some good young bigs. They drafted Oladipo last year. They still have Aaron to follow, depending on what happens with his situation. They're trading his ass. So I think they need a point guard. And if this guy is a projected and I'm not saying it, other draft experts are saying it, that they think he may become a Penny Hardaway type. Are they saying that? Yeah. I don't think he's the same athlete. He's not. That's why I said Penny Hardaway was a phenomenal it. athlete. He really was. He really was. I remember walking past Penny Hardaway when we were going to the club after Chris called timeout in the championship game. Yeah. It was like, you guys got a wait in line. Yay. <laughs> We didn't wait in line. We lost the game. We didn't wait in line. Nah. <laughs> did you play against Penny Hardaway in college? I did not. I always was a fan of his game. You know how I root for big guards. I mean, there are not too many guys, guys that played point guard at 6'6 six, six or above in college and actually got drafted to play. Did you, get to, did you get to play against him in the NBA before he got hurt? I did. Like just like a cameo or like a real game against oh, him? Oh, a real couple of games. You know, he's okay. quick off his feet. He had, he had good passing skills. He had good um, court awareness. By the way, first team All-NBA in yes. 1995. That oh. means he was one of the best five players in the league in Correct. 1995. Yes. Um, Dante Exum is not Penny Hardaway. No. I still think he could be really good. I, I think the comp, like just watching him, this is a terrible way to scout somebody, but what do you want from me? I'm 18 mile, eighteen hours away from Australia. <laughs> I feel like I go fly and see him. Seems very Larry Hughes-ish to me. Now, that could be a good thing and a bad thing because I actually thought Larry Hughes should have been better than he was. He never really picked a position. But he did average 20 points a game a couple years and was able to play point and – you know, he got paid too much too early and all that stuff. But I like that comparison. You know what I mean? I don't think Larry Hughes ever scored average 20 in the game. Yeah, he did. Really? Yeah. For who? 
I'll look that up right now as we're talking. But Larry Hughes never averaged 20. I'm going to look it up right now. Um, but the thing I like about the combo of him and Oladipo, I like when – because Oladipo is really an undersized two. He is. You want him guarding the other team's point guard, but you want him playing two on the offensive side. And he's going to work hard. He's going to play his role. Right. So Exum, Exum could, guard, could play point but guard the other team's two. Old Depot could play shooting guard on offense, but guard the other team's point guard. And that's kind of weirdly a nice fit. I like it. And I like Vucevic down low. He's continued to evolve. You like Vucevic? I do. Vich. I think I you say Vich with all the Croatians. Do you know how many guys there were named Hughes who played in the NBA? Take a guess. 18. No, nine. My favorite was Al Frederick. <laughs> Remember him? <laughs> Still not sure why he made it. Didn't your team draft him? All right, here we go. Larry Hughes. Drum roll, please. Oh, 22 points a game in 2005 for the Washington Wizards. Wow. 22. In fact, from, 2000, uh, from 2001, no, from 2001 all the way through 2006, averaged 16 points a game. Oh. Five rebounds, four assists. Him and Gilbert. He got paid. He got. Remember, he got like yep. a seventy million dollar contract. It was him, Gilbert, and uh, Anton Jameson. But again, people do like Exum, but I, I I'm not going to pretend I know if I'm going to study him on YouTube. But what is that going to do for me? Yeah, I need to see people in person. I do. But we think Orlando's going to take him. Orlando's going to take him. Are we sure they shouldn't take somebody else? No, I Would think you that fits. I, I think that fits for them. I think it'd be a reach to take another point guard at this point. So yeah, I think that's that's a safe spot for him. If Embiid fell to them at four, would you take him? You have to take him. So you think anyone Embiid falls to, you have to take him? You have to. Even if you're Utah? Yes, you have to. Okay. If Embiid falls, you have to take him. You don't go from being the number one pick the entire year to breaking your foot and then falling to 10. It doesn't happen. Mm. This feels like they're going to play this clip in the 30 for 30 about Joel Embiid (laughs) 10 years from now. Uh, Utah at five. Utah at five. Okay. They already have Cantor. They already have Favors. Not a huge fan of either of them. Right. Um, Gordon Haywood and his free agency. Restricted. They drafted Trey Burke and they drafted Alec Burke. I think they need to solidify their backcourt. Mm. Get a shooter. Oh. That can also play basketball. Are you going to go Gary Harris super early on me? I am. I think they should take Gary Harris at five. Well, they should trade down then because they get Gary Harris at nine or ten. They should not take another big. You don't like Noah Vonley? They just had Millsap. They just had Jefferson. They let him walk. That means you guys want these two big guys, Favors and Cantor, to do something. Mm. You can't take another big. Well, then I need to trade down then because I think I can get Gary Harris at nine, ten, or eleven. You can. Right. But if you're going to pick at five, you got to take him. Maybe I trade with Denver. Could you give me Gallinari in the 11 for the five? Well, Gallinari, you haven't seen him play in a couple of years. I still liked him. Yeah, I got to see a couple of minutes out of him. Okay. Preseason. Would you give me – yeah, you're right. He hasn't played in a year and a half. <laughs> yeah, you got to see some I forgot he didn't play last year. <laughs> exactly. Oh, that's just <laughs> I'm recanting that big trade. <laughs> Denver doesn't really have any assets. Yeah. They don't have any assets. They have Ty Lawson and Fareed, but then nothing else. Correct. And Ty Lawson dealing with a foot injury that um, is a little bit worse than people thought. Really? Yeah. Are you breaking news right now? Not at all. Oh. We, the thing about our podcast and the James Jacoby podcast, we don't have to break news because we say it real time. Right. It becomes breaking news when everybody else realized what we said a month ago. That's true. That happened multiple times. <laughs> yeah. Remember the time we did a whole segment about Larry Bird versus LeBron as the greatest small forward ever? And then ESPN decided to have a whole day devoted to it seven well, weeks later? I just noticed. It's just too bad we didn't do that right on this podcast and I, then televise and run it on Sports I said Center. the same thing about Kevin Love and Clay Thompson. Like we talked about that for a year. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, someday people notice us. <laughs> um, so, Utah, you think Gary Harris? They got to go backcourt. They need a shooter. You got those big guys, you got to spread the floor. And they weren't well coached. I know Tyrone Corbin's a former player, but I thought he was one of the worst coaches in the NBA. 
I thought he was the worst coach in the NBA. <laughs> okay. That's why I would try to trade for Gordon Hayward because you always want to have guys on teams that were had a bad coach because who the hell knows if any of those guys are better than we thought. Yeah. I'm a little worried about your GM prospects though because Gary Harris would not is not going in the top nine. So that means – So you got to trade down to get Gary Harris. got to trade down. Got to do what we got to do. I also don't like drafting by need over best player. Um, Because like, for instance – I really like Aaron Gordon. I think I like him more than you, though. I like him, too. I don't like Von Lee as much. Um, I like him probably better than you. Von Lee is 6'10", 250 already, allegedly. I got him a spot, too. So you know who else is 6'10", 250? LaMarcus Aldridge. You know who else likes to shoot 20-footers? LaMarcus Aldridge. Could he be LaMarcus Aldridge? So... Is that possible? Is that possible? No. Because he's a real knockdown shooter. Like, Von Lake can shoot. Aldridge is a shooter. Yeah. And so, I think, and we're going to six now? We'll finish Von Lake and then we'll go. Well, Von Lake's a couple of picks below. Okay. So, I got Harris at fifth. Could Von Lake be poor man's Marcus Aldridge? I think he could be Serge Ibaka. Serge Ibaka? Yeah. You think he's that good of an athlete? No, but Serge is a shooter, not a knockdown shooter, but he can make three. So less athletic Serge Ibaka. He can make open shots. Less athletic Serge Ibaka. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think Utah, see, I'm biased here because the Celtics have the next pick. <laughs> so I want Utah to take a guy that I don't want. So I think they should take Noah Vonda. <laughs> so you guys won't take him? <laughs> I got who you guys should take, though. Okay. You guys at six, the Boston Celtics should take. So you got Rondo and Bradley. I like that backcourt a lot for what they do. Rondo's an all-star and a champion. Bradley's a lockdown defender. That's become a shooter. Green's still inconsistent, but he's on your roster. He's going to show flashes. Okay. Your bigs are Ola Nick and Sullinger. It's, it's some trouble. Okay. Y'all got to upgrade there. We do. Y'all need to go Julius Randle. You're just not afraid of anyone with a broken foot. (laughs) (laughs) That's who y'all need to take. He's going to be Zach Randolph a little more athletic. Got a good nose for the ball, just like on on Monopoly. Hmm. You know, you got Baltic and Mediterranean on this side, and then you got Park Place and Boardwalk over here. Hmm. He knows how to find the real estate on the court to make a play happen. That's what I like about him the most. His court sense. Okay, so you and I spent a lot of time together over the last six weeks, and we spent a lot of time talking about this draft. We both really liked Julius Randle. Neither of us think he was used correctly by Coach Cal. All due respect to Coach Cal. We like Coach Cal. But I don't. he didn't let him shoot jump shots. I feel like he, he has 20-foot range, and we saw it a couple times early in the season, and then Coach Cal said to him, you're not allowed to shoot those anymore. And that was it, and he was just trying to pound it down low and be Zach Randolph. Well, the geometry, I think he's going to be able to shoot. Well, the geometry of the floor is we got Aaron and Andrew Harrison. One's a shooting guard that can make shots. He was clutching the, yep, he in the, the tournament, and all of a sudden he grew into a shooter. And then the other Harrison is more of a creator, can't shoot. And so you got James Young, who's a wing, who reminds me kind of like of a Morris Peterson, Mm. who can make threes but not necessarily knock down shooter. You can't have your power forward center out there shooting jump shots because that means you get no offensive rebounds. You're not putting no pressure on the defense. Just because of how the court is structured, that wouldn't be good for the team. Randall and Sullinger together I think would be fun because – then Randall could float in and out depending on where Sullinger looks like he gains weight during the season. But he's gaining weight right now listening to the podcast. And yet, I can't lie. I watched him at Ohio State, being a Michigan fan. He always seems to play well. He makes jump shots. Now, he wasn't a three-point shooter in college. He's turned himself into a better pro, possibly, than DeWan Blair. And I didn't think that that was possible. I really appreciate all these nice words about my Celtics. <laughs> uh, so, and Brad Stevenson could just go to um, UNC when they let go of uh, Roy Williams. I don't. Come on. Don't do that to me. How can a guy that's making multiple millions of dollars a year as the head coach of a basketball team say he doesn't know what classes kids are taking? 
It could be time for Ray to go. <laughs> That's your only job. Besides practicing games. The Carolina fans are the best, though. They're like, <laughs> he's just bitter. His career didn't work out. I'm just, and me, too. I'm yeah. just mad because we lost to Carolina in 93. Well, come on now. Um, so I think the Celtics should take Aaron Gordon with this pick. Wow. And I'll tell you why they shouldn't when you finish. Okay. I think he's the Russell Westbrook of this draft. I think people are picking him apart because they're not quite sure what position he is because he allegedly can't shoot because he, he – That's was, not an allegation. Well, he's 19. Well, well that's not an allegation. Could Gary, you shoot when you were 19? I am not the subject here. Could you shoot when you were 19? I could not. But Gary Harris you can. You learned how to shoot. Gary Harris can. I know, but I'm just saying it's he's 19. Okay. I don't care that he shot 42% so from free but throw. There are 19-year-olds that can't shoot. I just think he's he, not one. Here's what I want from <laughs> if, I, if I'm taking a top seven pick, or in this case, top six, I want somebody who loves basketball. He does. I want somebody who is super duper duper competitive, who will run through a wall to win games. I want somebody who is a fantastic athlete. And I think the rest of it's going to figure itself out. I felt the same way about Westbrook. I loved Westbrook in college. Me too. I, I have it in my archives. I didn't know he was going to go fourth, but he was like my big sleeper that year because I was like, this guy's a maniac. I love this guy. And I think Gordon's kind of like that. I think he's going to figure it out. I'm in on Gordon. I'm buying the Gordon stock. I'm going to tell you why you can't buy the Gordon stock. Okay. You just watched the San Antonio Spurs play in the championship, spreading the floor. A lot of times they have four guys that can make threes on the court. Who's going to shoot the ball with Rondo, Bradley, and Gordon on the court? Could he be Sean Marion? He's taller. He could be Sean Marion, right? A taller version. Guard both forward positions, stand in the corner, make some threes, come flying in, do cuts, learn how to play with smart people. He could be Sean Marion. He could be. He, he, he could be. Now, here's the problem with Randall. We watched him too much during this season. This always happens. He played, what, 39 games? <laughs> he was on TV 26 times. I feel like I watched him more than I watched any other college player. I watched Kentucky. Kentucky, yeah. You, the more you watch, like, oh, this guy can't do that. Oh, this guy, oh, watch when he does this. He can't do that spin move. Kid's 18 or 19. Right. Oh, he likes to pick his nose when he's sitting right. on the bench. Look. Meanwhile, Vonley, <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, Vonley is getting his ass kicked by Alex Ola and Northwestern twice. I didn't see that game because it wasn't on TV. But And then Vonley doesn't make the tournament. So I don't have an opinion on Von Lee because I didn't get to freaking watch him. Well, I'm a Michigan alum. As yeah. Everybody you knows. saw little Von Lee. And I saw Von Lee yeah. when he played against Michigan. And to be honest, he wasn't dominant against us either. Yeah. Like you Jordan, weren't watching him going, that's the number five pick, no question. Jordan Morgan held his own against him defensively. Okay. And he's hoping to get drafted. All right. Um, Horford. Held his own against him. Now, as a basketball fan, I won't lie to you. I was watching the game like, Phew. I'm glad they're not giving that guy the ball. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Well, that's the case for Noah Vonley. <laughs> People <laughs> thought the coach froze him out. Yeah, I'm like, And Whoop. didn't have point guards that got on the ball and all that stuff. Because he caught the ball a couple of times, did strong post moves, elbow the guy in the chest, jump hook, make the jump shot 18 foot, make the college three. So another guy that was a little like that was Derek Favors at Georgia Tech. Yep. They couldn't get him the ball. It was a whole thing. It swung around. It wasn't his fault. Mildly disappointing career for where he got drafted. I agree. Never kind of figured it out. Maybe it wasn't totally everyone else's fault. And so that's why I have your Celtics taking Randall. Okay. And I have the Lakers taking Von Lay. Because you have the oldest backcourt in NBA history. And Steve Nash and Kobe Bryant mm. that are going to make $36 million more than the big three in San Antonio right. combined. You're going to need an inside presence. Somebody that's going to do the dirty work, may, may make an open shot when you kick it to them. Right. And imagine the last couple of years, they've lost all-star centers in Bynum, Gasol, and Dwight Howard. But they got Robert Zachary. <laughs> So they have to, so they have to find some balance on that roster. I think they do it with Noah Vonley. What if Randall's there? Randall or and let's say Randall and Vonley are there. Who do you Randall? Think? You got to go for the buckets. I have been taking Randall. Is there any way Marcus Smart goes there? 
Chad no. has Marcus Smart going there. Why would they take Marcus Smart? I don't know. Why would they? When they have a shooting guard named Kobe Bryant. Who is Marcus Smart's comp? If he could shoot the ball, I would want him to be a Mitch Richmond. But he can't shoot the ball. But so, we, we, he was a point guard in college, though. I'm super confused out of, by him. He was playing out of position in college. He, so you think he's a two guard? He should not be the primary ball handler. So he's a two guard who can't shoot. There are a lot of them in the league. Um, the thing I like about him Pavel is... Pavel Cephalosha is one of those. Yeah, he's he's going to be sitting with us soon. <laughs> <laughs> um, the thing I like about Marcus Smart is how competitive he is. He's another guy. That guy's a badass, man. He can't even control his temper. He likes he wants to win so bad. I feel like he's going to figure out some sort of impact, whether he becomes Tony Allen. You know, even if he's just like defensive stopper, good uh, guy. See, this is what, something. See, you have to watch trends when you take guys. And so the trends are based on who's playing well or what's moving upward. So the teams that were in the finals have Dwayne Wade, have Manu Ginobili, Russell Westbrook, Chris Paul. Mm. You need a guy that can guard both of them. Yeah. And so that's what he's going to be able to do. You're going to need a two that can get switched on Steph Curry and give him problems every now and then. I just thought of the comp. Eric Bledsoe? He's not as explosive with the ball. Like, Eric Bledsoe will get in and out of traffic. He splits screen and rolls. Well, think about young Eric Bledsoe before we totally knew what position he was. He's faster. Maybe that's what he'll just have some sort of combo guard athletic yeah. impact. yeah. But he could in today's game, based on what I'm saying. You need somebody that can guard Lance Stevenson, but may get switched on Paul George. Mm. And so with his body style and his competitive nature, you always need those guys. And so I think there is a place for Marcus Smart in the league. I think he's going to have a long career. Now the key is got to get in the gym and start thumping that thing. He got to knock down some shots. I have Utah taking Vonley at five, just because I want them to. Um, <laughs> the Celtics taking Aaron Gordon at These six. These are abbreviated picks to help the Celtics cause. Aaron Gordon at six, <laughs> and then Julius Randle, the Lakers, at seven. I think he'd be a good Laker. I'm surprised that, and I wanted to ask you this question. So, as a lifetime Celtic fan, season ticket holder, mm. and you can see Bill Simmons online, you know, giving the middle figure to the Laker players as they leave the Not tunnel. True. I was when he was, a, <laughs> when he was a teenager. It makes me nervous that you want a player to go to the Lakers. No, I, I, it, I'm going to flip that around. <laughs> okay, I'm waiting. And I was a little suspicious. <laughs> I like Julius Randle. Okay, I want him. I want his career to turn out well. Please continue. And I think going to the Lakers and getting a lot of shots early on and, and just they don't really have anybody. Big spotlight so he won't be able to, like, slack off. I think it'll be good for him. I do, too. But I have him I like going, the thought of him in L.A. I got him going before that. I got him going to you guys in Boston. Okay. What, what about the light in Boston? I wouldn't be unhappy with that. I just worry about him and, like, he's not a rim protector either. Sollinger's not. Olenek's not. And if we're, I, the thing I like about Aaron Gordon is he could play at the forward spot, but he's also my rim protector. Well, I got to tell you a secret about your Celtics. Yeah, we suck. The two, of the, two of the guys you just mentioned won't be on the roster in a couple of years. Olenek and – well, Olenek will end up on the Spurs probably when he's <laughs> right. 38 pounds lighter. Right. right. Um, Sullen, so don't look at Sullinger like he's going to be a Celtic cornerstone. Sacramento's traded their pick. No, Sacramento, but I but I had to pick somebody because that was the rules. Right? I did too. Okay, so I got Dario Saric is their oh, they, pick. Stash him? Here's why. Here's why. They're the only team in the league to have three guys average 20 last year. Yeah. Okay. Isaiah Thomas, Rudy Gay, and Boogie! <laughs> right? Yeah. So you need to buy this, somebody that's going to be a facilitator, somebody that's from another country that has a secondary language, so when he gets upset at Boogie, he could curse him out, and he doesn't understand what he's saying. It's a great idea. I'm very jealous of it. <laughs> he's like, what is what <laughs> Right? And also, you need somebody, when they're going to this club, strip club, bar, venue, he's going to this other place. So now you have balance on your <laughs> roster. <laughs> 
totally makes sense. <laughs> I really think you need to be a GM. Right. And no not, GM has ever thought – we've had GMs crunch numbers, but never they've crunched the party numbers like and, this. And so who, whose best friend will he be? Ben McLemore. Well, we need somebody to take care of Ben right? McLemore. Right? That will be Ben McLemore's guy. He'll be his rook. They'll become friends. Mm. He's a passer. He makes other guys around him better. He's like a modern-day version of Tony Kukoc. What do you mean he's a pastor? Passer. Oh, passer. Yes. Um. Well, my pick had a little in common with wh- where you just went. I want them to take Alfred Payton. Is that his name? Did I just screw that up? No, that is his, pay- his name, but this is. Uh, I'll tell you why I can't take Alfred Payton. I'll tell you why I can't take him. I panicked. I thought I had the wrong name. Oh, yeah. They can't. By the way, I haven't seen him once. Just watched him on YouTube. <laughs> they can't take him. Why not? Because in the West, here are the guards you got to go against. Damian Lillard, Steph Curry, yeah. um, Chris Paul, Tony Parker, yeah. Russell Westbrook, Mike Conley. Corn Dragic and Aaron Bledsoe. You need Aaron somebody Bledsoe. that's going to get you some buckets. Can I, like, give, can I give you my reasoning? Patrick Beverly can lock down on D, right? Yeah. Just like Peyton's going to be able to lock down on D. Yeah. But on the other end, I'm resting. Okay. You just told me I had three 20-point scorers on my team. Yes. How many balls do I get to play with? One. Okay. So I don't need my point card but to score. you're not going to have Peyton on the floor with Thomas. Thomas is out. He's oh, I didn't say that, did. <laughs> he's, he's, I'm turning Thomas into my instant offense off the bench. Okay, well then, that makes more sense. So, here's what I like about Peyton. A couple of things. One, he's from Louis- he went to college in Louisiana. For some reason, I just feel like him and Ben McLemore are going to be friends. Even though St. Louis, Louisiana, <laughs> not that close. I just feel like they're going to be close. Ben McLemore needs a buddy. He does. Um, I like everything I've read. It, re- it reminds me a tiny bit of when Russell Wilson... Um, was in minicamp with Seattle, and people just started raving about him. And just one guy after another was like, oh, my God, this guy, I can't believe what a special human being. Like, you read about these workouts with Alfred Payton, every team that he goes to, the people are reacting like it was like Jesus walked through the the thing. Like, he went from 25 to 8 in four weeks just from these workouts. That's what happened with Damian Lillard. And I'm not going to turn into a NFL Yeah, exactly. That's what happened to Damian Lillard. And he went to Weber State. So – and so the success of him and guards like Norris Cole to a degree give people confidence that they can take a player like that. If he went to Kentucky, would we be talking about him in the top eight? Yes. Yes, we would. And so it's ironic that you brought up the Russell Wilson example because when he transferred from NC State, he went to Wisconsin where they were yeah. in the Big Ten. And I played against Michigan, so I got a chance to intimately watch him. Yeah. And I always felt like he had what it took to be a Drew Brees. Yeah. Because watching him play against Michigan reminded me of watching Drew when he played for Purdue yep. play against our team. So I was not personally surprised that he had the success that he had and the maturity that he has. And I do think Peyton, who's being compared to Gary Peyton. The GP, too. Has what it takes to have staying power in this league. A Patrick Beverly defensively. But you got to improve that offense. You know how I feel about point guards because we've talked about it. Your point guard is your leader. Yes. Your point guard is your slap dudes on the ass. He gives you the confidence. He's the guy that makes sure when you go out at night, everybody's included. He's paying the the guy that takes you out. He's paying the check. No question. He's the guy that somebody got dumped by their girlfriend or by their other girlfriend. So he hooks them up with somebody else. Yeah, he's like, oh, I got a girlfriend. I'm in Chicago. I'm about to call three females over for you. That's him. That's Peyton. He's the coolest guy. He's like, you know what? I'll handle the media tonight, Correct. Boogie. Just go stay in the shower. I, and, I got these guys. And also coming from a small school, yeah. he's going to be like, I arrived. Like, yeah. So he's not going to feel like you know, he got to be seen because he's going to appreciate the big stage. Chip on his shoulder. No question about small it. Small college. Carry, he, he might have to carry a bat on his shoulder. Going against these guys he played against. Oh, Marcus Smart. Oh, I can't wait to play Marcus Smart tonight. All I had yes. to hear all year was that that guy was yep. better than I'm going to kick his ass uh-huh. today. Correct. That's who they should take. That's Did I talk I, you into it? I think I might have. No. I think. You you took uh-uh. some guy just because I, of the club. I have him going in the lottery, but not there. So, so just then, to recap, I got Gary Harris, five. Yeah. I got to um the Jazz. I got Julius Randle, six to Boston. Noah Vonley, seven to the Lakers. Dario to the Kings at eight. Sarich. Sarich just remember, eight. With, the, with the other Croatian Yugoslavian, Sarich. whoever, it's, it's the itch. Sarich. And at nine... Yeah. Charlotte. Nick Stauskis. For Charlotte? Yes. Really? Yeah, watching them play. They got Kimba. They got Michael Kidd-Gilchrist. 
They got Al Jefferson. They need knockdown shooters. Everyone has McDermott going to them. I, I think he's going to make them slower on the perimeter. I don't think they should take McDermott. Let me give you an How about example. This? Can you really take Cody Zeller and, Mark, and, and McDermott in back-to-back years? No, you can't do that. And here, and let, here's, here's the thing. McDermott, while I do think he has what it takes to be a long-term pro, I really do. He can't be a starting three-man in this league. No. Let me tell you some of the guys that started the three for the people who's going to get mad at me for that comment. LeBron James, Kevin Durant. Paul George. Paul George. Carmelo, Carmelo Anthony. Anthony. He can't play three in this league. No. Okay. No, but he could be he, a stretch four with a rim protector behind him. He can be Ryan Anderson. Yeah. Okay. But he doesn't play three. He plays four. And so I was thinking he'd be pay, maybe Paige just to Akovic, but Paige was actually a not three, a bad defender either. A six, and he was yeah. six seven. See, this guy's six nine. Yep. Okay, so he ain't gonna be out there guarding those guys. Kawhi Leonard. I've told you what I'm worried about with McDermott. I'm gonna say it on the podcast. Okay, okay. go ahead. What are they gonna do? Fire me? I just wait. Possibly. Got, hey, possibly. Well, what? <laughs> you know, there are a lot of people that def- depend on your livelihood now. White guys with big asses make me nervous. <laughs> I'm all for white guys. I'm not afraid of white guys. But when you throw in the big ass, I get nervous. I just don't know who his comp is. I'm trying to think of the white perimeter scorer in my head who had a big ass. Are you ready for this? I worked out with him before the draft, and I said he was going to be a player. And right now, he's going to be the biggest free agent to change teams since Charles Barkley in Phoenix. His name is Kevin Love. Kevin Love got in shape. So Kevin Love lost 20 pounds. Yes. But he was a power forward. Correct. This guy is a pure perimeter player. Yes. So I'm taking him, really hoping that I'm going to take his body and put it in a different place. Because yes. right now it's in a place that's not going to last long in the NBA. It doesn't matter what you do. Just off his skill set and the way he's going to move his feet and the way he's going to open up his hips and, you know, things like that. He can't start at the three and play against those guys we can talked we, about. Can we eliminate the Kyle Korver comparison now? Just because no, they're white. Kyle, no. They have nothing in no. common. Just stop that, with Kyle Korver. lazy. It's just like, hey, two yeah, white guys. Yeah, Let's that's team just, together. Yeah, that's just lazy. I like my pa- page of comparison because I went – Page is foreign, and, and Doug McDermott's American. I like going the American foreign. It's fun. almost like when you want to compare Kobe, you want to compare LeBron, you want to compare Wade. You always say, Jordan, WWJD, what would Jordan do? Well, that's why he's the GOAT, because nobody's going to be able to do what he does. Or when they compare lefties to other lefties, just because yeah. they were lefties. Yeah, correct. Yeah. It's like, no. And so, so anyway. I, I don't think, I think they should take Nick Stauskas. He's a stretch shooter. He can run in transition. I really like Staskis. I don't like him for screens. Charlotte. So, so, but imagine. So is there six man? Imagine Al Jefferson. No, he's 6'6". Six, six. He can start if he grows into his game. So You're going to play him and Kemba together? Yes, he's 6'6". Six, six. So who is my defensive? Michael Kidd Gilchrist. See, I'm putting teams together. Simmons, yeah. this is what we do with Al about, Jefferson. I don't know if I like that You got to bring back Mc, McRoberts. Uh, can we just take Marcus Smart here? <laughs> why wouldn't they just take Marcus Smart? Well, I'll tell you why. Okay. Because who's going to shoot the ball when Al's posting up? Kemba Kid, Walker. No, you got Kid Gilchrist and Marcus Smart spotting up for corner threes. Hold on. I got to do something. <laughs> I just I just poured out a forty for um, I'm resigning from the Michael Kidd Gilchrist fan club. We had a good two year run. I believed. I defended him. I think that shot's broken. It is. I don't see him ever being able to shoot. Big in this shout- day and age, like you're Jared Jeffries if you can't shoot. Big shout to our friend and idol and coworker Doug Collins, and he says this: the game is so hard when you can't shoot. Doug Collins hates very few things about basketball. He hates turnovers. And people that can't shoot. People who can't shoot, who <laughs> play a perimeter spot. What else does he hate? Guys that don't play every night. Remember he talks about MJ yeah. playing 82 yeah. games. Guys who take nights off. Guys who jog back on defense. Yes. Yeah, it's very few things. And guys who blame the coach in the media. Yeah, guys who yeah, they're the coach <laughs> and the bus in the media. <laughs> but one of his least favorite things is a perimeter player who can't shoot. Yeah. He said, you hit, coach, you better be the best defensive player in the league of if you can't time. shoot. <laughs> exactly. um, and I don't, I, I just don't see it with Kid Grocrest. So my point is, I, I'm not worried about Kid Grocrest when I make that pick. 
I like having a backcourt of Marcus Smart and Kemba. It's the same situation like last year with Cleveland where they should take an old depot, but they had Dan Waiters. Like, oh, we, well, we have Dan Waiters. We can't take old depot. It's like, just take old depot. Well, and in who, this case, it's like if Marcus Smart's there at nine, take but, Marcus Smart. But I don't know, Bill. I got a question for you. And, yeah. And for all you fans out there, we hope to be making these decisions for your favorite club one day. Right. Who do you think's better between Oladipo and Waiters? I think I need to ask you that question. Interesting. <sighs> Who would I like if I could have one guy for the next ten years? What's no? You're playing outside on Saturday in the shirts versus skins. Oh, who's better? Oh, that's interesting. And if you lose, you got to wait four games. I'd want to play with Oladipo. But who's better? I'd be a little more scared of playing against Dan Waiters. <laughs> exactly. Because <laughs> he could go off. Right. He can make threes. He'll dunk on you. But he's the, he's also the guy who, if you pick him for your team, he misses three shots. He gets mad he didn't get the ball. Then he stops playing, and he's calling for the next game, halfway through your game. He's pointing to his buddy. Like, can, I like, with you? can I run me? with you? Can you get me? Can I get you the next game? He's right. also that guy. So he, Whereas Oladipo is like, we're winning this game. Right. So so I think I'd pick Oladipo. So Oladipo is more reliable. You feel like there might be a chance you might have to pop the trunk on waiters if he gets upset. <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I wouldn't have anything in the trunk in the trunk other than my daughter's soccer uniform, but I would still pop it. So he'd be threatened. Um, all right. So you, for Charlotte, you say Stauskas, who I really like. I'm not against that. But I, I think if Marcus Smart's there, they should take him. Philly 10. This is where I have Peyton going. Okay, I like it. Because him and Michael Killer. Now neither of those guys could shoot. What are you doing? But he. But so now remember. But Michael Carter Williams is six seven though. So now you put him with Peyton, who can guard the point guards. Now you got a real backcourt in the Eastern Conference. Can I ask you a question? If Michael Carter Williams was in this draft, let's just say he got thrown back in the draft. Okay. Where does he go? What pick? Does he get past the Lakers at seven? He'd go, he'd go higher than he went. Would he go higher than seven? Yes, he would. I don't think he goes higher than seven. I think he would. You yeah. think Utah would take him five? Yeah, that's what I'm looking at, Utah. Or maybe even the Magic. Maybe they would like him more than the next one. They were going so. for a big guard. I think last year's draft was historically awful. It was. And the more I look at it compared to this draft, and I think like somebody like – Whoa! Well, like somebody like Trey Burke, <laughs> where you're like, Trey Burke. Trey Burke wouldn't even be a lottery pick in this draft. Even that's, after having watched him on Utah for a year, I don't think he's that, a lottery that's pick. Why, I just think it was a really bad draft. That's why as a player, you got to strike when the iron is hot. Mm. And when you decide to declare, Bill – those are the reasons you take into well, account. We, you and I, we've talked about this on the podcast where you came out a year too late. Yeah. You, lo- you, you cost yourself 10 high. spots. Yeah. You got you to gotta hit it. And so, like a player like Gary Harris, hitting it perfectly. Embiid, Wiggins, Jabari, mm. Randall, Gordon, Vonley. I have Philly taking Saric here at 10 because – I, I my plan for them if I if I'm taking a bead and Sarge, I stash Sarge for a year and Bead takes his time to come back and I'm awful again and I get another top four pick. I don't want anybody who can help me. <laughs> All due respect to Nick Stasis. <laughs> and my love for uh, Sarge has come out a little bit. Um because we wrote about him great in a little bit, but I love that guy. I think I think Sarge is one of the can't miss guys in this draft. And you love the fact that he said, "I only want to play in L.A. or Boston." I like that too. That means he has good taste. <laughs> He's good taste. I'm playing Boston. There's a 12 minute YouTube clip of him that is off the charts great. There's a 12. That guy's minute. like he's like six ten Ginobili. He goes to the hoop like a freaking maniac. He shoots threes like he's a badass. He was playing pros when he was 16. Tony Ku coach, like like Tony Ku coach with with big nuts. Yeah, I haven't seen. Either one in the shower, but <laughs> you right. with big hypothetical. <laughs> um, so anyway, I have that ten for uh, Denver at number eleven. You ready for this? Th- this is the pick that's going to shock people. Okay, I had to go back over this twice when I was doing who I think teams should take. Did you have anyone taking Vonley? I did. I have Vonley going to the Lakers at seven. Okay. 
So I got Randall to the Celtics. So you have no Aaron Gordon yet. I have no Aaron Gordon yet. Wow. Okay. So for for the for the Denver Nuggets, you ready for this? Yeah. Shabazz Napier. Oh, that's really high. You have Shabazz Napier going over Aaron Gordon. Remember, I said this. Okay. Yes. Remember, why do you want me to remember it? Because so I can make fun of you when it when he, when he goes thirtieth. <laughs> no, actually, I forgot Aaron Gordon. <laughs> <laughs> They're not taking him over Aaron Gordon. You can change your pick. I'll give you a bogan. So you wrote that at Hooters an hour ago. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I wasn't paying attention. I was paying more attention to the to shirts and skirts. <laughs> so Charlotte, I think, should take Gordon. Okay, good. Charlotte's gonna take Gordon, okay. Charlotte suggest your scorecards. Yeah, Charlotte's gonna take Gordon. Okay. Okay. So you don't have Alfred Payton going to them anymore? I have Payton still going to the Sixers. At 10. Okay. Right. I have Stauskas going to Denver. Okay. Fair enough. That's what it was. I have I Stauskas have, going to Denver. I have Gary Harris going to Denver. Nice pick for them. He shouldn't fall that far. That's a nice pick. Ty Loss and Gary Harris, Fareed. Now I'm building something. He I shouldn't like my fall team. that far. My team's headed somewhere. Hey, Gary, this is JaVale McGee, your new teammate. What's up, Gary? <laughs> no. Let's go out. So speaking of the Nuggets, you got to talk about, you know, they're trying to be in the Kevin Love. They're not stage. getting Kevin Love. <laughs> they're going to trade all their assets for Kevin Love what, and he's not going to stay there? Why would he stay there? Yeah, I just had to Hey, Kevin, you get to play with – with Kevin, you got traded to Denver. Oh, cool, I get to play with Ty Lawson and Kenneth Reed. No, no, those guys got traded for you. You're with JaVale McGee and Danilo Garinari. That's not happening. Oh, so that's line. what I was doing. So I got Stauskas going to Denver. Well, then you just – oh, yeah, okay. You All right. And, and for the Magic, right? Let me make sure we match this. So they took Exum with their first pick, right? Yeah. Now I think they need a stretch four here. McDermott? Adrian Payne. You said McDermott fell out of your top 12. You have no room for McDermott. No, I got a spot for him, but okay. not yet. I got Adrian Payne going to the Magic. I have uh, Stauskas going here to the Magic. I like that. I like that for them. So, Although, what, do they need they need a point guard, don't they? What do they go? So you draft him. So let me tell but you. But I what, took all the point guards. Let me, let me tell you what But you I already doing. ripped off Smart, Peyton, and uh, no, you they're doing, all gone. You're doing what Sacramento did when they took – so they they already had uh, um, a couple of point guards, and then they, and then they draft Jimmer, right? They draft Isaiah Thomas, they draft uh, uh, Mclemore last year. Yep. They have all new guards. So if you're gonna take another guard with the Magic, you just took Oladipo. Yep. You already got Aaron Aflalo. I'm trading Aaron Aflalo. Okay. Yeah. He's out. Then that makes sense. More sense. Yeah. I'm trading Aaron Aflalo. I, I, t- I made that pick assuming that I think they're going to trade him. And they're probably going to trade him to Charlotte at number nine or Denver at number 11 or wherever. But I don't think he's on the team. Now, Payne is going to be an interesting prospect. Well, it turns out he had mono for two and a half months, right? Yes. During the season. So I, I'm – chip. Him and Gary Harris, chips in the middle of the table. Like those guys, they compete. I, I really appreciate about that, that about both Last of them. great Michigan State NBA player. Zach Randolph. Okay, he was in the 2001 draft. You, well, you can say that about a few schools. You can say that about my alma mater if that's the case. I just wonder, okay, let's say it about your alma mater. We only have three pros. I wonder why the Michigan State guys always look better in college than they do in the pros. Um, because they're they come from a system, right? They great are, coach. They are coached um, every day in practice, every game, every shoot around, every possess, every every possession. And so, by the time they get to the pros, though, at least they're a more mature player because they understand playing in a team concept and and working hard. I'm not against Adrian Payne. You know what? Now, I really like the thought of Stauskas on Phoenix. I kind of screwed that up. I should have rigged it. 
But I think uh, I like Orlando, and they can use Stauskas as a six-man. Minnesota, 13. Now, this is where they get Doug McDermott. Oh. You lose Kevin Love. You bring in Clay Thompson. Lee plays inside. That trade's not happening. They're not getting Clay Thompson for Kevin Love. You think that's happening? I heard it on the James and Jacoby podcast. Oh, stop it. (laughs) They are. I know, and see that's the Celtic fan in you. I know, I know that trade's not happening. And you know, you know what I like about I don't think Golden State traded Clay Thompson. Let me tell you what I like about you from a national media perspective, and everybody in Boston stand up right now. How you just wrote an article recently to say how the Celtics have the best assets to get Kevin Love because Golden State's not trading Clay Thompson. (laughs) That's because you want him in Boston. Golden State's not trading Clay Thompson. It's because you want him in Boston. Because Michael Thompson's dad said it on the radio, they're (laughs) trading him now. He probably wouldn't know a little bit about what's happening with his son. I have uh, McDermott going to Minnesota. I agree with you on that. That's a good one, right? Yep. And then 14, Phoenix. This is an easy one. They need a three. James Young. Seems pretty easy. Yeah. They already got the little point guards. You got Gorin. You got Bledsoe. Did we forget anybody? I don't think we did. No, that's 14. So to recap mine, so everybody want to keep score. I got MB, Wiggins, Jabari, Exum, Gary Harris, Julius Randle, Noah Vonley, Sarich. No, you changed one of those, didn't you? No, no, that's right. Oh, Sarich, okay. Sarich at eight. Yeah. Aaron Gordon at nine. Yeah. Alfred Payton at 10. Stauskas at 11 for Denver. Payne at 12. McDermott at 13, James Young at 14. Okay, and I don't remember who I had. (laughs) So I changed my mind a bunch of times. But I like the thought of Peyton on the Kings. I like Gordon in Boston. I, I I guess I did mostly picks that I that I just like the thought of. I like Randall in L.A. Me too. I like the thought of Stauskas on some sort of team that will use him as a six man coming out of the gate. They have to run. Orlando. Whatever team he plays on have to change. They got a wind, windshield wiper the game. I have an announcement to make now that Ty Corbin's not in the league anymore. Now that Mike <laughs> Brown's not in the league anymore. You got another worse coach? I think Jacques Vaughn is the leader in the clubhouse right now. Yeah. That team was a lot worse than it should have been the last year. I agree. Come on, Jacques. Come on, Jacques. No more tank. No more tanking. <laughs> Enough. <laughs> Enough of the tanking. You're I a know, good we team. Was looking at his roster, like, well, Oladipo only played 15 minutes. It, you know, whatever. Um, <laughs> Jalen Rose, yes, enjoy sir. the weekend. You enjoy the weekend as We're well. We're going to be in New York City. Wednesday night is the draft. In New York! <laughs> it's concrete jungle <laughs> where Jews are made of. Uh, the scores night. is made. Okay, yeah. Wednesday night draft preview. Thursday night. Jay Billis, Reese Davis. Yes. The scene in New York City! <laughs> Where dreams are made or broken. (laughs) Thanks for listening to the BS Report. Enjoy the weekend. Thank you for downloading the BS Report with Bill Simmons. Too much fun. Check out more podcasts at the iTunes Music Store or at PodCenter at ESPNRadio.com. Peace out. Got to say, Gola, great call on grabbing Subway for lunch and getting guacamole on our subs. Told you this new guac really amps up the flavor. Yep, something adding up. Things can be great. Guacamole on your sub, a new co-host to replace you. What was that? Oh, no, nothing. Subway now has deliciously rich new guacamole made from ripe Haas avocados with just a hint of garlic, onion, and jalapeno. Discover how new guacamole turns up the flavor on any of your freshly made favorites. Subway. Eat fresh.